could have been anywhere on a beautiful Nebraska Saturday in late summer. But you, you chose to be here. For, for the most beautiful and simple reason, you love this country. Look, I know firsthand about this place. The people in this state are decent people who, who show kindness, who show generosity. And you know what I also know about this state? Nebraskans don't fear the future. You make the future. And I know it personally. I was born in West Point. A Welton Elementary School in Valentine, and I graduated from a town of 400 named Butte. I had I had 24 classmates. Some of them are here today. Folks from that town, and I just want to say this. I don't know what their politics are, but I've known their friendship. I've known their kindness. And when our family was down on the luck, they were there for us. I hope I've done the same for them. I wouldn't trade growing up in that town for anything in the world. Spent my summers working work with them, working on the farms. I graduated from Shadron State College. For folks outside of Nebraska, you usually refer to it as Yale of the Midwest. <laughs> and I taught school in Alliance. Now here, here I have to be a little careful. I grew up, as all of you, bleeding Nebraska red and true brew Husker fan. But now, now, I'm, <laughs> but now I'm the governor of Gopher Nation. So I know. Look, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it safe. Go Mankato West Scarlets. Never close the yearbook. Never close the yearbook. Look, my mom and dad and those people I grew up with. They taught me some things in those communities. Show generosity towards your neighbor. Work for a common good. They also taught us, and this is for all the people outside of Nebraska, they taught us that chili and cinnamon rolls is the most. That's a, that is the most perfect culinary combination in the country. Look, right now, I couldn't be prouder to be on this ticket to help make Kamala Harris the next president of the United States. <laughs> I'm taking these guys with me everywhere we go. <laughs> Look, you've heard the vice president say this. She said, only in America could a woman from Oakland, California, who worked shifts at the local McDonald's while she got her degree, be our nominee for president of the United States. When, when I heard the McDonald's uh, story about work, that she's worked at McDonald's, like so many of us growing up took jobs to get by. I, I, the funny thing to me was is, can you picture Donald Trump working the McFlurry machine? Oh, he knows us, he knows us. He couldn't work the McFlurry machine. Many of you in here did. 
But I have to tell you, from her first day as a prosecutor, and then as a district attorney, and then as the Attorney General of the State of California, a United States Senator, and our Vice President, Kamala Harris has been on your side fighting for you every step of the way. She's, she's the one who took on the predators and the fraudsters. She's the one that took on the transnational gangs. She's the ones who stood up against corporate greed. And she never hesitated to work across the aisle if it was right for the American people. For all, the, for all the things she's done over the last 10 days, I have to tell you one of the things I'm most grateful for. She has brought the joy out in this country. Smile. As the First Lady said, you can do the work in front of you. And hard work is good work. But you can do it joyfully. You can do it with decency. You can do it with kindness. And my community, this state, taught me a little something about a shared commitment. My dad served in the Army during the Korean War. With his encouragement, two days after I turned 17, I went and raised my hand and joined the Nebraska Army National Guard. I had the privilege, I had the privilege of wearing this nation's uniform for 24 years. Thank you, Jim. 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 Thank you,
Those are the values that I learned out in Butte. Those are the values I learned with these people who are here that I tried to instill in my students that I took to the United States Capitol and took to our state capitol. Now it's time for Vice President Harris and I, as we're running on these values, let's take them to the White House. Let's take them to the White House. It's time. It's time. Yesterday, yesterday, Vice President Harris rolled out a plan to start building an opportunity economy during our first 100 days in office. Cutting taxes, not for the billionaires, but for the folks in this room in the middle class. Taking on those who will price gouge at the grocery stores and other stores. Lowering the cost of rent and the opportunity to own your own home. Continuing to cut the costs of prescription drugs that, drugs that we all depend on. And just like we did in Minnesota, relieving medical debt that straps millions of people. Now look, we're positive, but I think we all know Donald Trump sees the world a little differently. You think he would understand the importance of Carhenge as a historical relic? That The British made a replica of it out of stone. It's so important, so just so we know. Or do you think he would know the joy of tubing and swimming the Niobrara as we do in the summer? And this one's for the gray hairs in this room. You think that guy could understand the pure joy of pre-gaming at sidetracks before a Husker Sooner game? All I can say about that, too, is I'm glad there weren't video cameras around at the time. So We've been there. Look, in Nebraska, you got a slogan here. Nebraska, it's not for everyone. Well, it sure ain't for Donald Trump, I'll tell you that. This guy is the opposite of everything here. Every opportunity he has, he weakens our country to strengthen his own hand. He mocks our laws. He sows chaos and division amongst us. And that's not even counting the time he was president. So look, I want to be clear, because I know where I'm at, and I know my family. Many of you can probably remember when Republicans talked about freedom, they meant it. They would have never turned their back on our allies. The, tr the traditional Republican Party before Donald Trump contributed much to this state and this great nation. But he's not that. Today, when they talk about freedom, they mean the government should be free to invade your exam room. Or that corporations should be free to pollute the air and water. Banks should be free to take advantage of the least fortunate. Look, in Minnesota, we respect our neighbors and their personal choices. Here in Nebraska, it's the same way. We might not make those choices for ourselves, but we live by the golden rule. And that golden rule is, mind your own damn business. Mind your own damn business. Look. I know this state. I know this state, the kindness, generosity. I also know there's a libertarian bent. You don't need government to tell you about your health care. You don't need government to pick your books out that you can read. Look, folks, this becomes really personal. And for me, this idea about the health care decisions we make and the choices about our family, that's your family. You don't need me, you don't need Donald Trump, you don't need anyone in government telling you about your family. But that's exactly what they're doing. That is exactly what they're doing.
If you're an old school libertarian Republican Nebraskan, this is the ticket for you. This is the ticket for you. When my wife and I decided we want to have kids, we spent years in fertility treatment. And for those of you, you may not have done it yourself, but I guarantee you know somebody who's been through this. And you know the nightmare of waiting for the calls after the treatment, praying that it comes out right, and then that pit in your stomach and that blackness that comes over you when once again it failed. And year after year, you're trying to just have that child. So you better be sure to know it wasn't by chance when we finally got the news that we were pregnant and when our first child, our daughter, was born, we named her Hope. We named her Hope. So when this ticket talks about freedom, we mean the freedom to make your own health care decisions. Make them yourself. And we mean that your children should be free to go to school without worrying about being shot dead in their classroom. Fre freedom is when education is a ticket to the middle class, not crippling student loan debt. Freedom, where the air is clean, the water is pure, and your communities are safe. And the freedom to settle our political differences, not by violence, but at the ballot box in November. That's what this is about. That's how simple this is. What direction are we going to go in? Donald Trump, he wants to take us backwards to a time where people didn't have that vote. We're not going back. We're not going back. And look, look, when he tries to play dumb about this 2025 plan, I coach football for enough years. When somebody takes the time to draw up a playbook, they plan on using it. He knows, he knows what this will do. Restrict our freedoms, rig the economy for the ultra rich by punishing the middle class. If he returns to the White House, he's going to pick up just where he left off. But the people around him who worked with him the first time are already telling us it will be much, much worse. Raising costs on you while making it easier for billionaires. Repealing the Affordable Care Act so we can go back to pre-existing conditions and making it impossible to get health care. And they're very clear about this. They're very clear. Gut Social Security and Medicare for those tax cuts for the wealthy and ban abortion across this country. We know in this room, abortion is health care. And again, that's your decision to make. That's your decision. And, they're, and look, they're super concerned with our bedrooms. They're super concerned with our uh, exam rooms. They're super concerned about our libraries. And I have to tell you, yeah, when they make decisions about your health care, yes, it's weird, but it's worse than that. It's dangerous. When they, when they try and cut Social Security for our seniors like my mom who've earned it, that's not just weird, it's cruel. And when they try, which they did and will again, when they try to overturn fair elections, that's not just weird, that's un-American. That is un-American. And this idea about knowing us, let me ask you something on this one. Do you think J.D. Vance knows one damn thing about Nebraska? No. He's going to be here next week. You think he's ever had a runza? You think he's ever had a runza? That guy would call it a hot pocket. You know it. Every one of you in here know it. A damn hot pocket. Now look, I, he wrote a memoir at the ripe old age of 31. And he claimed to be an expert on middle America, all the while while trashing and denigrating the very community he was raised in. 
Look, folks, in the heartland and in Nebraska and in Minnesota, we don't need a Yale-educated philosophy major backed by billionaire venture capitalists to tell us who we are. We know who we are. We know who our neighbors are. Well, I don't know about all of you. It's time to put these guys in the rearview mirror. Let's end this. It's time to put them in there. Say it with me. You know it's true. We are not going back to that. We are not going back to that. We're not going back.